What do you do that you're unaware of, but it's keeping you from trusting yourself a hundred percent? I know weird question, right? That's really hard to answer because you don't know that you're doing something unconsciously until your attention is brought to it. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about today on video chat with Jody. And I've added a second segment for the first time ever. And it's a game and with a prize, I must add with a prize. So I'll tell you more about it in a few, but first let me help you see the mistakes that you've been unconsciously making so you can stop making them and start trusting yourself a hundred percent. Let's chat. Hey, so you're having a hard time trusting yourself, huh? Well, if you learn what you're doing wrong and the mistakes you keep making, then hopefully you'll actually stop making these mistakes and start trusting yourself more. And I made a list of all the mistakes that you've been unconsciously making, and I wanted to share them with you. And if you're questioning right now, how did I come up with this list, right? Well, I took my life as an example, and I took the things that I did that made me second guess myself and stop trusting myself in order to help you because (laughs) I know I'm not that special. And if I'm doing these things, then maybe someone else is doing it. And that's what I wanted to share with you. So you may be second guessing yourself and not trusting yourself because you're a people pleaser. I know, I know, a people pleaser, like the worst thing that you could ever say. And why I'm saying this is because when you value people's opinion more than your own, even when you have that great idea and that great thing that you want to do, if someone else second guesses it and say, "Hmm, maybe you shouldn't, your automatic thought is going to be, oh, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe they're right. Maybe they um they know best. They've they've been doing this a little longer. Even when the person has no experience in what you're actually telling them. And because you want to make them happy and you want to look good in their eyes, you tend to value their opinions more than your own. So you end up being a people pleaser. And because of that, You may think that everyone else knows better than you. Now, let let me explain this because you know that everyone is not better than you, but your actions say that everyone, you think that everyone is better than you. And why I say this is, let me give you an example. I was doing, let's say I was doing laundry, right? And someone came up to me and say, hey, you shouldn't use that brand of laundry detergent because that one leaves residue and, you know, it doesn't really get the clothes clean. Now, in my experience, I've used this laundry soap more than once It's always gotten my clothes a lot cleaner than everything else. And I know that it works. But because this person comes and tells me, hey, maybe you shouldn't be using that because it doesn't really work. Even though I have the experience with it and knows that it know that it works, I still look at them like, okay, okay, I guess I'll I'll change to the one that that you're using to, you know, to try it out, to see if it works for me, knowing that I already tried it and I didn't like it. So that action in itself proved that I think other people know better than I do instead of looking at my experiences and saying, hey, not everybody's opinion is a great opinion, you know? And That's why I say you value other people's, or 
not you value. You think other people know better than you. And yes, some of them do, but this extend to everyone. And that is the thing that is going to keep you from trusting yourself a hundred percent. Because as soon as somebody says something like that, you completely switch what you were doing and take their advice and do theirs instead. The thing that might bring this on, and you may agree or disagree, is that you were taught that you couldn't do anything right. You couldn't wash the dishes right. You couldn't wash your clothes right. You couldn't do your homework right. You couldn't, when you're learning to drive a car, drive properly. You couldn't do anything that was right. And because of this, you stopped trusting yourself. You didn't stop trusting the person that kept telling you you couldn't do anything right, even though your actions were actually proven that you could do things right. What you started doing was you stopped trusting yourself. And that's a huge reason why now you second guess and you think of everything that you could possibly think of to talk yourself out of something, even though you know you want to do it and you know it's a good idea if you go forward with it. And children are taught that, hey, you're not doing this right. You're not doing this right. You're not doing this right. And, you know, I have a a thing with that as well, because when it comes to technology, I'm very... I would say I'm not as advanced as I would want to be, but majority of the time, I know the little tricks and the shortcuts and everything in order to get me quicker to where I'm going. And when I see someone else doing the same thing, but they're taking a hundred steps more in order to get to the destination, it frustrates me. It frustrates me a lot. And I just want to help that person to show them, hey, you don't have to do half of, you don't even have to do 90% of that. You can jump from here to here and you get the same exact thing. But because I was taught that I couldn't do anything right, I see in other people when they're doing things their own way and arriving at the destination that they arrive, I look at it like, hey, you're not doing it right. But who is the judge, really? I do it my own way, and they do it their own way. It's not that, hey, there's a right or wrong. And that's the difference when it comes to, hey, you doing something right, or you can't do something right, or you're doing something wrong. You have to look at it a way as in, I have my own way, and that person have their own way. And if we end up at the same destination... Just hit the mic. Sorry. (laughs) If we end up at the same destination, then who cares? You got there. You got there. Um, Another thing that may be pressing you, right? And causing you to stop trusting yourself and to to eat. This one's a major one because I used to do this all the time and I catch myself doing it now. And it's second guessing yourself. Now, I made a whole vlog on this and um, I'll link to it if you want to watch it. I feel like it's a really good vlog, so enjoy that. But When you second guess yourself, it makes you seem undecisive. And when people think you're undecisive, they tend to try to make the decisions for you because, hey, you're not going to make up your mind anyways. So I'm just going to make that decision for you without including you in that decision making. (sighs) Second guessing yourself is stopping you from trusting yourself. And it all comes that literally everything boils back down to just trusting yourself. Because if you feel like, Hey, I should go and water that plant over there because it looks like it's about to die. And then you're thinking, Hmm, maybe I shouldn't water the plant. Um, 
I did give it water yesterday, uh, but it does drink a lot of water, but maybe I shouldn't. And then it, you go back and forth, and you go back and forth, and you go back and forth, and it never stops. So what do you do? You don't do what you said you were going to do. And then five days, five days later, when you're like, oh, I should have watered the plant. What are you going to do then? Yeah, it's late now. Go water the plant. But when you second guess yourself, and you talk yourself out of doing the thing that you wanted to do in the first place, you end up doing it again later. That's, <laughs> it's just like, it's a whole circle. It's a whole circle where you're like, hey, I want to do this. And the annoying voice in your head is like, mm, maybe you shouldn't do this. Maybe you should go do something else because this may not be worth it at this time and whatever. And like, sometimes that voice may help. But majority of the time, it doesn't help. So it's like that first push that you get, like, hey, you should go do this. Go do it. Don't second guess yourself. Just go do it. Another thing that is on the list of the things that you're doing that is causing you to not trust yourself 100% and <laughs> this one, your gut feeling. That inner knowing when you're like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't walk down this dark alley in the middle of the night, but it's late and I, it's a sh really quick shortcut to, to get home and I just want to get home and you go down the hall, go down the alley and hey, there's two people down there and they just took all your money. Yeah. Yeah. That gut feeling that you had, that uneasy feeling like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't do this. Well, that was your intuition telling you, hey, listen to me. Don't do that. And I've had to learn this one in some really sticky situations because I'm stubborn sometimes. Very, very, very stubborn. But the thing is, when I ignore that gut feeling, I'm always... It's just like when I second guess myself, that gut feeling later on, I'm just like, ah, I should have, I should have done, I should have just listened to that feeling that says, no, Jody, no, no, don't do it. Just stop, stop and go somewhere else. Do something else. Don't do that. Yeah. I have this story where I'm in a car with an, a friend of mine no longer a friend anymore. But we had went to a restaurant and, you know, it was, wasn't was a very good time or anything, but on the way home, I just felt off. And this feeling just like sat there with me. And it kept urging me to say something, to say something, to say something, to say, hey, you know what? I think our friendship has come to an end and I don't want to continue this anymore. Me being the coward that I was, I didn't say a word. I just sat there in my thoughts and... You know, when you're in deep thoughts, especially me, when I'm in deep thoughts, it's like everyone is like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, nothing. I'm just like really deep in my thought. I was, I was so deep in my thought that I couldn't even remember the ride home. And she turned around and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Knowing damn well I wasn't fine. I was not fine. I was nowhere close to fine. I knew I should have said something. And it's crazy because my gut feeling was telling me, hey, if you don't do this now, you are going to pay for it later. So either you feel this hurt right now and say, hey, just let's just, you know, end this, call it what it is, end this, and then go about my business and do what I want to do. Instead, I was like, no, I hope, I hope. I hope that things are going to be better and, you know, whatever differences that we have, we're going to work it out and, you know, they're going to be my friend forever. Let me tell you about something about being naive. 
naive and stupid. <sighs> it didn't work out. It didn't work out. And I paid heavily for not trusting my gut feeling. <sighs> Have I done that since? Not to that extreme, but there are instances where it's like I get that little feeling. I'm just like, mm, maybe I shouldn't do that. And then I go and do it anyways. And I'm like, oh, when am I going to learn what am I going to learn? And that's one of the things that's keeping all of us from trusting ourselves 100%. Another thing, and you might not think that this is a huge thing, but this is number six, by the way, if you were counting. <laughs> I have seven of them. So this is number six. If you negatively talk about yourself, and what I mean by negatively talking about yourself is if you constantly say, oh, it's just my luck, just my luck that I ran outside to catch the train and the train is gone the minute I get there. Oh, it's just my luck that it's raining today and I didn't bring an umbrella. Oh, it's just my luck. Oh, I'm just so stupid. Oh, I don't deserve any of that. Come on. You're basically saying exactly what you're getting. And if you don't stop doing that to yourself, it's going to keep happening because your words turn into your reality. And the more you talk about yourself negatively, the more you're like, oh, well, you know, um, I'm kind of slow. I don't really understand this. Um, you're going to have to like explain that. Well, guess what you're telling your brain? You're telling your brain that, hey, I don't believe in you. I believe that I'm slow. So what is your brain going to do? Slow down. Do you want that? No, you don't. Honestly, you really don't want that. But because you keep saying that, that's exactly what's keep happening. And we really have to learn to stop talking negatively about ourselves and about the situations that we're in. Like I have a friend, right? And every time we go out, and everything. They were like, oh, it's just my luck that I forgot all, all the things that I needed to bring. And it's just like, uh, no, it seems like you just, you were rushing and you forgot to grab what you needed to grab instead of saying it's just your luck that you forget these things. No, if you slow down instead of rushing like a freaking crazy woman, then you would have the things that you need. But they're not looking at it that way. They're looking at it that, hey, this just always happened to me. This happens to me. And even like Ariana Grande said it in, in her song, um, which like, break up with your girlfriend or something, whatever. Because I'm bored. Yeah, that one where she's like, this always happened to me. And I'm like, girl, you just, you basically just claim that. Like, don't stop claiming that for yourself. Don't claim that. Don't claim, oh, bad luck follows me. Mm -mm. It don't. You keep, you keep inviting it. So stop. Stop inviting those things into your space because they, they don't belong there. They don't belong there. And you really don't want them. Okay. So the number seven is. <laughs> Number seven is when things don't work out as they normally do. When they don't work out, instead of you seeing the positive lessons from, from this, right? From that certain thing not working out. The thing that you focus on is the negative part. Want an example? I'll give you an example. So, I had a computer and this computer was old. It was like that old IBM type computer. That was my, like my first laptop. And I sort of hated it because it, it was old. And it was around that time that I was like, Oh, I want a MacBook and everything. But I was freshly into college and get a MacBook mm -mm, that wasn't anywhere near any type of budget. And one day, because it's an old computer, it died. 
Now I'm thinking, hey, now I don't have anything to do my homework. I don't have anything to finish all the, the, the extra things that I needed to do and to make things work in order to meet all the classes deadline and everything. All I kept seeing was roadblocks, roadblocks, roadblocks. I didn't realize that me working with that type of computer was teaching me how to use that complicated system, which later on, when I had a job, they were using the same IBM type of computer. And if I didn't know how to use that computer, I wouldn't actually know how to deal with that in the job. And it's just like, we see the negative things always. And we try to justify everything. I was like, oh, well, if this never died, we, I would have gotten this done and we got that done. But at the same time, I was thinking about everything that I learned. I learned to do a whole bunch of tech stuff from that old computer that made it a lot easier to when I transitioned to a newer computer that everything flowed and worked so much faster. And These things hold us back from propelling forward. When we focus on negative things, we we end up stuck in that frame of mind. And it's so easy to see something positive. But if the only thing that you're focused on is just negative, you'll never see the positive part. It it's just it's gonna be like, hey, I'm right here. Hello. Just just twist a little bit and you'll see that that was a good thing. And it, it's like, uh, we never see it until way after. Another great example about this is whenever something like in our lives just crashes and burns, like we're working on something and we're like, yes, this is going to work and this is going to basically be the best thing that I want it to be. And then one day you wake up and it's just, it's just gone. It's just gone. Everything you've been working on, every, every effort that you put into it, everything. It's just like, no, I'll see you next time or never. And it's just gone, completely gone. The frustration from that is a whole different type of agony that really sits with you and just like pisses you off over and over and over and over. But the thing that you're missing is all that work that you did to the point when everything crashed and burned. That was lessons that you needed to learn. And the reason why that thing crashed and burned was that thing wasn't for you. There's something bigger that you're now ready for because you went through all those lessons planning that one thing. And without that thing crashing and burning, there would be no space for the next thing that was coming in. (sighs) We fall victim to that so many times, so many times, especially me. It's just like, We get so caught up with, oh my gosh, I was working on this and this just completely blew up. What am I going to do now? I I can't. How am I going to move forward? We don't know. We don't know because we're not supposed to know. And then when things work out over time, we're like, oh, that's what was happening. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't, I won't question it next time. And then next time it happens and you're like, why? (laughs) Yeah. And we go through this whole cycle all over again. So it's like, these are the mistakes that we've constantly been making that keeps us from trusting ourselves a hundred percent. And these may seem like, you know, they're, they're little mistakes or it's, they're not so big of a deal, but because of these things and allowing ourselves to keep doing these things, we're holding ourselves back. And as I said earlier, now that you're aware of 
what you're subconsciously doing. Now you can catch yourself while you're doing it. It may take some time because you've been doing this for your whole life. And you just now learned of the mistakes that you have been unconsciously doing. Now, be gentle with yourself because change don't happen overnight, okay? It doesn't happen overnight. And for you to really catch yourself before you start doing this, because that's the ultimate goal. You want to stop yourself before you start being the people pleaser before you start thinking everybody is better than you and jumping with their idea instead of yours, before you start ignoring your gut feeling. You want to stop all of those mistakes before you do it. And that, that's the ultimate, that's the ultimate growth. Now, when you catch yourself after, like after you've done it and it's like five, 10 minutes go by and you're like, oh, wait. I just did that. That's a good thing because now you're seeing it. Now you're seeing it. So even if you catch it afterwards, don't be mad at yourself. Be happy that you caught it. Now it's that, it's that same thing with being, with seeing the negative and seeing the positive because you caught it, even if it's 10, 15, half an hour, a whole day, uh, two weeks later that you caught it. The good news is that you caught it and it's no longer subconscious. So you can't continue doing it subconsciously. Now you have a choice. And then the more you catch it, the more, the more you grow and the more you're like, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. I see what's happening here. Let me go the other direction because if I choose to continue this way, then this is what's going to happen. And that's the, that's the part where you fully trust yourself where you're like, I know what's going to happen. I've seen these signs before and my gut is telling me this and uh, I'm not going to negatively speak about myself in any of this. I'm just going to do this. That's growth. Okay. And that's what trusting yourself fully really feels like. Now, will you fully trust yourself? Like a hundred percent all the time. Maybe not. We are humans. I don't have like half the time. I I've gotten better. I must say I have gotten a lot better, but sometimes you won't, you won't understand what you're, <laughs> what happened. And afterwards you're like, Oh wait, I just, I just did that. Yeah. Okay. Don't beat yourself up again. I am like, the poster child of beating herself up when it comes to doing things that I knew I could prevent. And it's just like, oh, why didn't I do that? It, it doesn't serve any purpose. It really doesn't serve any purpose. So the time that I'm spending doing all of this beating up myself and everything, it, it's pointless. So will you 100% trust yourself? The goal is that, yes. Will you falter along the way? Definitely. And during those times, it's okay. Go do something that makes you happy. Forgive yourself and then continue. Okay? And that's kind of all the mistakes that I wanted to touch on today. And next up, we have, for the first time, the game. The game the game. Truth or dare? Yep. Truth or dare? Truth or dare? That's the game. It's a fun game. If you've never played it, it's basically I tell you something and you guess if it's true or false. And in this case, what I will be doing, it's like a get to know me more type of situation where I'm going to tell you a story and your job is to guess if it's true or if it's false. And the prize, the prize, I know you want to hear about the prize. So the prize will be, drum roll, a hundred dollar Amazon gift card that will be delivered on the night before Christmas. So 
I'm, that would be my Christmas gift to you. So this game is basically going to tally up over time and whoever gets the most questions correct, they're the ones who are going to take home that Amazon gift card on Christmas Eve. Okay. So next week, I'll give you the answer to see if you were right or if you were wrong. All right. So it's a continuation of the game. So it's like a never ending game, like the never ending story. <laughs> All right. So the story. I was told, and remember, you have to guess if it's true or if it's false, okay? When I was younger, I was told that as a baby, in the house that I was living, I would take two paint cans of just empty paint cans and fill them with stones, like really big stones and walk from the front of the house. But them just, you know, just walking around like, Ooh, I'm working to, to the back of the house and to the front of the house and to the back of the house and to the front of the house, and to the back of the house. Now this continued for a while. And the only reason that it stopped, was my dad saw that I was gaining muscles and he thought, "Mm -mm, you're a girl, you shouldn't have muscles. And he stopped me. So was that true? Was that story true or was it false? Let me know and I will let you know if it's actually true or if it's false in next week's episode of video chat with Jody. So that's all for now. And I hope you have a great day and feel free to watch another video because <laughs> I have some more and go watch that vlog. If you keep second guessing yourself. Okay. I'll leave a link where you can actually see it, but until next time, let's keep chatting. <laughs>